Savior. Lord, there is none you. All of my days, I want to praise the wonders of your mighty love. Come on, sing it out, church. My
looking around this room tonight and I see people from all over the world. There's people from all over the world watching right now. And we welcome you. But the thing I love about this song is no matter what language, you know this song. And there is just something about when we all get in one accord and in unity and we start singing, shout to the Lord, all the earth, let us sing power and majesty, praise to the king. There's something about that. God hears that and he sits on the praises of his people. I see Russian speaking folks. I see Spanish speaking folks. I see all kinds of people represented here tonight. And you know what we're all singing? You know what we're all saying? Nothing compares to the promise I have. No, nothing compares to the promise. Nothing compares. Nothing compares to the promise. Nothing compares to you, Jesus. You said you'd never leave me nor forsake me, God. Nothing compares, Lord. Nothing compares to the promise I have in you. In you.
old folks used to say it like this. He's all I need. He's all I need. Jesus is all. He's all I need. He's all I need. Jesus is all I need. And my papa would say this He's real to me. He's real. I 
I'm going to share a little testimony tonight because this song right here has gotten me through some really tough times and I'll tell you why. I grew up in a pastor's home and when I was 19 years old I moved here to Columbus from Kentucky. My dad lost his mind when I left and he followed me here totally out of the will of God and he became addicted to prescription pain pills. For the next 20 years, my dad, who was a pastor, good man, became a completely different person. He was in and out of prison, in and out of jail, in and out of police stations. I saw him get arrested in our old church parking lot, pouring rain, begging the police officers, you know who he is, please don't do this. But it was the best thing for him. It was the best thing for him. In that time, he became completely absent from my life. So I spent 20 years with a dad, the next 20 without. I'm 43 today. One night, I was in my bed and I was crying. And I said, I don't understand. What did I do to make this man not want to love me? anymore just because he's addicted to drugs I didn't give him those drugs I didn't force him to take them but yet he doesn't want nothing to do with me and I started singing you're a good good father it's who you are it's who you are it's who you are I'm loved by you. It's who I am. That's who I am. That's who I am. When you come to the realization that the king of the universe is your daddy. When the king of the universe calls you daughter calls you son everything that you know can pass away but as soon as you understand that he's holding you in the palm of his hand because he's a good good father you no longer need the earthly things they shall pass away because he would struggle with the thought that I don't need to be here anymore. My daddy doesn't love me anymore. Daddy issues. Daddy issues. My daddy doesn't love me anymore. And it's not my fault. Every single time I thought, I just, I just need to just end it all. I started singing. With this gift that he gave me. Like a good daddy that gives you gifts and wants to see you use them. I said, I'm loved by you. That's who I am. I'm not another number. I'm not suicide. I'm not abused. I'm not sad because I'm loved. Carrie, why you got a lot of baggage? <laughs> you know what? I 
check those bags at the door as soon as I walked in. This ain't no coat check. This ain't no bag check. This ain't no place to pick up your baggage. It's a place to drop your baggage off and realize that the King of Glory is everything you need. So tonight I want to extend an invitation. Is this okay? If someone has left you or abandoned you, somebody you thought that would be there your whole entire life, and they left. If you're watching online tonight, and somebody has left you that you thought would be there for the rest of your life, and you find yourself alone, you find yourself looking at the, down the barrel of a shotgun, I found myself behind the wheel of a car getting ready to run myself right into a telephone pole. But I was like Saul when he got knocked off the horse. I got knocked off my high horse. My selfish high horse that wanted to take my own life just because a man who made me said that he didn't want me no more. That don't mean nothing. Because the king of the universe wants you. He loves you. He made you. He's sitting right there beside you. No matter where you are, no matter what you're doing, he's right there beside you right now. I'm going to invite you right now. I feel this so strong. I feel this so strong in my heart. I'm going to say a prayer and I want you to repeat after me. Dear Jesus, my father, my friend, you love me. Everybody else can leave. But as long as I have you, I've got everything I need. Help me, Father, realize that you are my Father. You're everything I need. I give it all to you. I give everything to you right now. Every time I've been disappointed, I give it to you. Every time I've been abandoned, I give it to you, God. Now, God, I thank you that those feelings are gone. I'll never be the same from this night forward. Now give him a shout of praise because it's done. One more thing and then I'm done. Pastor was talking about the show The Chosen the other day. You have to watch it. When the woman with the issue of blood makes her way through the crowd, she doesn't touch Jesus. She doesn't touch his robe. She grabbed his tassels from his belt. In other words, you just gotta touch something that's touching Jesus. And right now, the anointing that's in this room is touching Jesus. It's touching him. So if you need something tonight, I don't know what it is. If you need a healing, if you need somebody in your family saved, if you need somebody that needs to be delivered, it's here tonight. All you got to do is touch what's touching Jesus. We're going to sing this one more time. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It has new meaning now, right? It's who you are. I'm loved. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. 
on, Pastor Chris. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for the finished work of the cross. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. For the finished work of thank the cross that you, changes God. everything. Jesus, Jesus. Changes Jesus. everything. Changes Jesus everything. everything. Nobody like Hallelujah. 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 My 
You know, Pastor Chris, when, when you went into How Great Thou Art, I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm not going to lie, I'm going to be transparent. Can we do that on revival nights? We're singing about his greatness and I was thinking about my problems. And the Holy Spirit just rose up in me and said his greatness will never make you void of problems but his greatness will help you to be able to overcome the problems his greatness it doesn't make us void of suffering. It doesn't make us void of sickness or disease or depravity. It gives us the power to overcome. My favorite scripture, it says, in this world you will have trouble. It's a promise. It's a promise. In this world you will have trouble. Jesus prophesied that. He told us, his disciples, we will have trouble. We will have problems. We will have sickness. We will struggle. We will have suicidal thoughts. We will have people that will abandon us and betray us and disappoint us and lie on us. But the second part of the scripture, that conditional promise of God that our pastor's been teaching us about, in this world you will have trouble, but take heart, be encouraged, be uplifted, for I have overcome the world. So if you have problems, praise him, because you know the rest of the promise is that you're gonna overcome, because he's great, because he's a good father, because he's mighty, because he's matchless, because he's magnificent, because he's holy, because he's worthy, because he's glorious, He's victorious. He gives us power over sin, power over sickness, power over disease, power over depravity, power over demon power. So we praise Him and we worship Him for His goodness, for His grace, and for His mercy tonight. Hallelujah!
never promise that the cross would not get heavy or that the hill would not be hard to climb. He never offered a victory without fighting, but he said help would always come in time. Listen. So just remember where they are standing in the valley of decision. The adversary lies and says, give in, listen, just us. Our pastor teaches, I'm going to let you find my mic. Find my mic, find my mic, find my mic, find my mic. There it is. There it is. The devil's a liar. He doesn't want us to be in here. Y'all get that, right? So he's going to fight every way that he can. But our pastor teaches us, hello pastor, that you will always in this Christian journey, you will experience valleys and mountaintops and he teaches us that the only reason that God allows us to be in a valley is because there's a giant there that needs to die and that's what we're in here doing on Wednesday nights in the tabernacle and online we're coming in here to get in the cave with some fellow giant killers and slay the giant of sickness, the giant of lack, the giant of homosexuality, the giant of depression, the giant of anxiety, the giant of generational curses, the giant of disease, the giant of diabetes, Cameron. I'm telling you tonight, those numbers are gonna regulate. You are healed, you are made whole, and he will
from the deep, 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 deep place. I've heard your cry. And this night, you loosed. Hey, 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 I'm not at somebody else's church. My church knows how to church. If I look at you and point at you and you look behind you, you just took every anointing I was going to give you off of you. You have to pursue God. You can't be looking at God like, oh, you don't want to do anything for me, do you? Who, me? Come here. That's far enough. Yeah. Why aren't you shouting? You don't act like some other church in here. Come here. Okay. Okay, so like, so like, Everything is prophetic. Yes, sir. Shout it. Everything is prophetic. Shout it again. Everything is prophetic. Shout it again. Everything is prophetic. I want every person in this room to drive home a different way than you normally drive home. Why would I want you to do that? Because you serve a creative God. You know what a rut is? A rut is a grave with the ends knocked out. You go home the same way, you sit the same place. Everybody go change seats. That's good. That's go good. That's change good. seats. language of? Possession. What is walking the language of? Possession. What is walking the language of? Possession. 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 Right. Now I love you, but you ain't going to come in here with this. That, that, that's for other people. That's when people don't have the Holy Ghost. You understand me? We walk and we possess. We spin and we make war. Yeah. We shout our way into victory. Yeah. Oh, oh. Look at these young boys. Okay, okay. Ain't nobody around me with a microphone. Tell us your name. My name is Treshawn, 17. My name is Judah, I'm 16. My name is Daly, I'm 17. My name is Chris, I'm 16.
My name is Matthew, I'm 17. Okay. Uh. You can't. How, like, how old? Wait, how old? 17. 17. 16. 17. 16. 17. If you can't shout about four young men, Okay, we're gonna shout. We're gonna shout because that devil is a liar. Yes. They ain't out carjacking. You don't have to be afraid of them on your way home. You white folk don't have to reach over and lock your car. They ain't out gang banging. And I don't care if there's only one of them. We're going to shout and thank God till they both are gone. Yeah! Hey, 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 hey. Washington's going to do nothing. The mayors are going to do nothing. You want to take your homes back, start walking around them. That's good, that's good, that's good. You want to take your neighborhood back, get two or three of you, get four of you, two by two, and just go walk up and down the street. Ain't nobody going to bother you. Okay, watch this. Watch this. I see that two of you, that's Captain America, right? I like Captain America. I preached a sermon about Captain America. It was a good one, too. Pastor, what? these are all, you recognize that, I saw that one. warrior logo because yeah. these are all Harvest Preparatory School students. Except my buddy down here. My buddy down here. Wait, there were some other young people with you, weren't there? that came, where'd you come from? Uh, Castellia, Ohio. Castellia, Ohio. Okay. I want any kids that came with this whole group, run up here. Here they come. Here they come. Here they come. Are they with you? Well, get him up here then. Why are you standing there? Everybody shout, I don't know what y'all so stiff about tonight. My God. Okay, scoot this way. Scoot. And pastor. In a minute, in a minute, here's what God told me this afternoon. He said, this is what I require of you tonight. If I had a pastor that God talked to in the afternoon because I was going to be there that night and God knew what I needed, so he told the man of God what I needed, yeah, I'd yeah. lose my natural white, yeah, black, yeah. Hispanic, Asian mind. Yeah. Somebody shout, I love the Holy Ghost. I love the Holy Ghost. Okay, wait a minute. I got I to gotta take a side step here. Okay, uh, come here. S Sammy, Sandy, what's her name? Stacy. D come here. God told me this afternoon he is going to cause you to triplicate for the work of the ministry, and he's sending three women that are going to help you. Run, lady, run! Why is that woman running? 
started by herself. I feel the Holy Ghost now. Who did this? What, what is this? I love everybody. You ask me when you're going to put stuff like this all over where I got to preach. Nobody asked me. Pastor. What? So not only is it significant that these young men from Harvest Preparatory School are here tonight because they're young people that want the spirit of revival, because that's important, but all of their peers are currently at a basketball game. No, wait, because I heard about this. I heard about this. She went, did you see her little face? She went, uh-oh. <laughs> These two are so beautiful. They're Harvest they Prep beautiful? students as well. Yes, sir. Anyway, wait, I have to tell you what I was telling you over here before I fell over this stuff they put in my way. What, what, what? God said, God said, the only thing I require of you tonight, you ready for what he told me? Come on, come on. Because it's going to hit 100% of you. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, we receive it. We receive it. It's going to hit the preachers and the deacons and the elders yes. and the elders' wives. Yes. It's going to hit everybody. Could it hit you? And you. Yes. And you. Yes. Come here. Yes. Come here. Hurry up. Come here. Who 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 are who 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 are who are you? Um, I'm Danaea. I'm Wayne and Rachel Hasselu's daughter. I, I couldn't hear. Danaea, Wayne and Rachel Hasselu's daughter. What? <laughs> Stop it! <laughs> She's Wayne and Rachel's girl. Didn't recognize you, haven't seen you since you were like five years old. You were like this big sitting in my mama's kitchen table. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. Wow. Wow. Do you go to Columbus State? No, you're just wearing the shirt? Yeah. <laughs> Have you graduated? Yeah, I graduated last year. Last year? What are you doing? Um, I'm currently just working right now. I go to Bowling Green State University. What'd she say? She goes to Bowling Green. Bowling Green. And working. Well, work always work. Any student that doesn't work is lazy. And as Mother Parsley would say, won't amount to nothing. My mama would have been 88 years old yesterday. And I feel her all up in here. I feel her all up in here. Oh my goodness. See, I try to, I try to just, you know, I do, I try. We're in revival. You know? We're in what? We're in revival. What? Revival. What? We're revival. in revival. God told me when it hits the young people, it's here. It's here! No, don't offer me that. that that's, that's the devil. My dear, dear friend, Dr. Oral Roberts, uh, can you imagine that I can call Dr. Oral Roberts my friend? Some of you don't know where you are. Dr. Roberts had to have both of his shoulders 
cut open and operated on. Somebody asked me the other day, well, how can I believe in healing and pray for people to be healed if I got an ingrown toenail? People ask the stupidest questions. Stupid. Or as Mike Murdoch would say, stupid. That's stupid. You live in a cursed world. You do everything you can possibly do to get healed. Dr. Oral Roberts built built one of the greatest ministries the world has ever seen by laying hands on people and God healing them. Then you know what he did? No, you don't, because you don't. I don't know what we're teaching at Valor. I'm going I'm to get in there and tear the thing up. By the way, I see very, very few faculty here tonight. So I'm going to take care of that too. All right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't look at me funny. When the anointing comes, I don't fear nobody. I don't fear nobody. Hey, buddy, what's your name? What's his name? Michael. 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 Michael, yes. Michael, God is going to answer your prayer financially. I thought I'd prophesy it through it. Somebody shout! So what I was, what I was, what I, was, what I, was, what, I, was, what, I, what I, anyway, God's putting the gift of prophecy in your belly. Oh. Well, if you want it, why don't you take it? Why are you stand there? Just take it, man. Okay. Okay, so I was over here. I dare you to throw both hands up and shout. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, here I am. I want you in all of your fullness. Jesus, baptize me in the Holy Ghost and fire. I receive it now. Take it. Take it. Take it. I want it all. 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 Look at it. Look at it. Get over here. That a boy. That a boy. I'll teach you. They won't. I will. I want you to shout while God puts prophecy yeah. in her belly. In a minute, I don't know when I'm going to do it. Woo. Woo. God's about to wreck. God is about to wreck Russian Harvest Church this Saturday night. Okay, wait. So I'm over here. So I'm, so I'm over here. Anyway, I was telling you, pray for me Monday because, you know, maybe something happened between now and Monday morning at 7.30. But Monday morning at 7.30, I'm, I'm going to let the doctor cut up my hand. And uh, it's worse because it's moved up into my elbows now. And some of you preachers need to learn uh, 
get you some other way to preach than choking a microphone right. to death for 50 years. All right. My thumbs are gone. My fingers won't bend. My elbows won't work because I've squeezed that microphone and preached for 50 years. But I'm going to keep preaching. Yeah. Yeah. yeah! God didn't bring me back from the dead to play with it. So, 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 uh, prophesy in your house. Prophesy in your house. It, like, like. If everybody else is, you know, in one room, you go in another room and you prophesy. And you just prophesy and God will give you the yeah. words up out of your belly yeah. and whatever you declare because God gave us a word for this decade yeah. and that word is open your mouth with a mighty decree and I will fulfill it. Now you'll see the words that you say, so shall it be. like in the biblical sense of the term you are a saint everybody shout for the blessing that this woman is That's like fire. That's like fire. That's like fire. That's like fire. Put a microphone in his mouth. Prophesy to our pastor that healing is taking place in his body. Мы отвергаем всякую болезнь. Мы отвергаем болезнь. We go against all of this disease. Это ложь дьявола. This is a lie from the devil. Что болезнь в этом теле? That sickness is in the body. We uh, prophesy the truth. He has sent his word and heal in the name of Jesus. Stay with him. Virtue went out of him. 
power went out of him. Okay. So God the Holy Ghost said to me, this is the only thing I require you to do tonight. And it will touch every single yes. person yes. in the building yes. and watching. Yes. Yes. In about three minutes, God's going to take shame off of you. All shame. All shame. Since you've been a child. Who is that? Pastor. Pastor, that's Maui. Maui, yeah. Several Sundays ago, he and his beautiful mother and siblings came to the altar yeah. after they'd been invited by a woman in our church at the dentist office. Stop. And they gave the. Stop. Stop. I got 70 people, 70 people that I'm training on Sunday night. 70. 12 wasn't enough. Now I'm going to go from 70 to 120. But right now I'm at 70. And I'm training them. I'm training them to be true Christians. Yes, sir. I don't put no condemnation on you, but if you're not inviting people to church every week and winning souls, uh, a lady, it's like three weeks ago now. Yes, sir. On Sunday morning, I've got to hurry. On Sunday morning. Yes, sir. Right? invited this precious lady yes. at the dentist office That's right. to come to church. That's right. She came to church. Yes, sir. Her and her whole house yes, sir. came to the altar. Right, They were standing right there. Yes, they were. And gave their lives to Jesus. That's right. That was three weeks ago. Yes. They haven't missed a service since then. Listen to me. Listen to me, my 70 people have face-to-face, one-on-one, invited over 500 people to church in the last 14 days. So, not only did they come to the altar, give their hearts to Jesus, but it, Maui's precious mother said, I want What's to- What's your name, honey? We call you Maui's precious mother. <laughs> Anicia. Anicia, Miss Anicia. Right. She, Miss Anicia said, I want to make this my home church and I want to raise my children here to include them attending Harvest Preparatory School. And our, and Michael, our usher. Where's Michael? Where are you? Michael. He said, I'll pay right his there, tuition. He's he right there. David, David. I'm so sorry. David. He's only been here 30 years, but whatever. So when you're under the anointing, yeah, just you. take whatever name we yeah, give you. Yeah, take it. So David slash Michael slash Gabriel, whoever, our usher buddy, whose daughter. Yeah, she's back there. I saw That's her. right. She's right there. There she is, been, waving her hand, waving her hand. Had rededicated her life one week prior. Right. He said, I'll take care of Maui's tuition. Then you said, I'll take care of Maui's uniforms. But wait, Andrew Mills, the head of school and principal at Harvest Prep, my cousin, s called me and said, you're not going to believe this. So I contacted the uniform store to let them know that Maui would be coming and that Pastor Parsley was taking care of that bill. Yeah. The owner of the uniform store said, we love Pastor Parsley and the work that he does with young people, so we're gonna give him $500 worth of uniforms for free. Woo! And 
This is just a little, I'm just gonna parenthetically insert this for the parents. He tested two levels above his grade. And that's a single mama. What's your excuse? What's your excuse? Hey, hey, I don't say things like this light, lightly, but every time I see Maui, he has a glow. Yes. Oh. You know, like, I'm not, like, I'm not playing about it. Yes. Like, he just, look at him. Yes. The Spirit of God is yes. all over you, Maui. Yes, yes. God's Holy Spirit is all over you. He loves you very, very much. Yes, he does. And you're going to do great things yes. for yes. God, Maui. Yes. Great things for God. Yes. Hey, Mom. Hey, Mom. Hey, Mom. All shame's going tonight. Yes. yes. All of it. All of it. All of it. All of it. Come here, Maui. Come and let these Harvest Preparatory boys pray with you. Come and let them pray with you. You just stand up here with them and let them pray with you. Soak up that anointing. Pastor. Let me, let me help you. This is the gospel. Yes. yes. Let me yes. help you. This is revival. Yes. A little child shall lead them. How long has it been since you had tears? Elders, leaders, preachers. How long has it been since you had tears? Jeremiah, where are those who will weep between the porch and the altar? Where are those that will wail in sackcloth and ashes until we see these by the thousands? I told, was it here I prophesied it or on the road? I don't remember. The day of child preachers has come again. All right. All right. You never seen it. Oh, you don't remember where I prophesied. I don't even. I just sow seeds. I said I just sow seeds. Okay, it's time for shame to leave you. Yeah. 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 No, see, you buried it so deep. Now, you got, you got to open up and let the Holy Ghost get down in there. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, you sealed it off. You sealed it off. You've been broken. And you put crazy glue on it. But tonight, no. God is calling deep to deep. And in one moment... What has been lodged in your heart, in your mind, in your emotions for decades is going to be unlodged, loosed, and come out of you. Are you ready? Father, in the name of Jesus, our shame died on Calvary's tree. Now, devil, we cast it back out of our lives in the name of the crucified Christ. I command you on three shout go. One, two, three. No, keep shouting. Savannah. 
Hallelujah. Go and pray with Rachel Canterbury. Rachel, the shame of that addiction to alcohol is leaving you tonight. It goes tonight. It goes tonight. Go, Savannah. It goes tonight. The shame. It goes now. Woo! Pastor Parsley. In your book, The Cross, it talks about seven exchanges that were made at the cross. And one of them was our shame for oh, his yes. glory. Thank God we don't have to bear our shame anymore because he bore it on the cross and he has exchanged it for glory. Somebody needs to give God some glory because he gave you his glory! Here comes the glory of the Lord! Here comes the glory of the Lord! Okay, 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 I want everybody 20 years old and younger to get right in the front, right now, right now, everybody, Every, I don't care if you're on the 92nd row, come on up the steps, that's fine, come on up the steps, to right here, that's right, right there. Here comes the glory of the Lord. You're going to sing, sing. Here it comes. Here comes the glory of the Lord. Sweeping, sweeping every room. The glory of the Lord. Oh, here comes the glory. I'm not playing. Every head bowed, every eye closed. God's going to change lives and eternal destinies. Every young person on this platform is going to live forever somewhere. Somewhere. They're going to live forever. Every one of y'all. Just keep your heads bowed. Keep your eyes closed. Please do what I ask you to do. Now, the Bible is the only book that gives directions to eternal destinations. And it only talks about two. I'm talking to everybody in this room. I'm talking to everybody online. I'm talking to everybody on the podcast. I'm talking to everybody on Instagram. 
everybody on Facebook, everybody on YouTube, everybody on Twitter, everybody on radio, everybody on television. I'm talking to you. One is a place called heaven, a place called heaven, where we live in the presence of God forever. The other is a place called hell, where your Bible says men gnaw their tongues for pain. It's a place of the eternal incarceration of the doomed and damned souls of humanity who said no to Jesus when they should have said yes. There's a God-shaped vacuum inside you. And this world tries to fill that vacuum with everything but God, and that's why you're never satisfied. Only God can fit into that vacuum. And tonight of all nights, he had you be here. Don't say, I decided to be here because the Bible said the steps of a good man and woman are are led by the Lord. So God brought you here. And he brought you here because he loves you. He loved you so much. He doesn't love you with some kind of sissy love. And he doesn't love you with lust, meaning he just wants to use you. He loves you. With so great a love that he went to a cross and allowed them to nail him to a tree to shed his blood for you. He went into a borrowed tomb, and God our Father raised him from the dead. That's what Easter is all about. And he said if you just believe in him and confess him with your mouth, he would give you eternal life, forgive all your sins, and give you heaven to go to heaven in. But if you reject him, God says woe to him that hardens his heart. He will be cut off without remedy. That means when God calls you, like he's doing tonight, there's no guarantee that he will ever call you again. But he's calling you right now or you wouldn't be here. I'm talking to everybody. When I say three, if you want to be absolutely sure that Jesus Christ is your Savior and you're on your way to heaven, you want to be absolutely sure of that, then when I say three, raise your hand. We're going to pray. At the end of that prayer... God will do exactly what we ask him to do. Some hands are already going up. Don't open your eyes. Don't open your eyes. On three, raise that hand and we're going to pray. One, this is not to play with. Two, three, raise that hand and leave it up. Every person that's in the congregation, if you're watching online, I want you to type in the word S-A-V-E-D, saved. And I'm going to send you some literature. I'm going to put you on my prayer list, so do it now. Do it now. Type in the word saved. Leave your email address. If you're in this room, if you're in this room and you're not on the platform and you raised your hand, I want you to come immediately and stand in front of me right here. Quickly, quickly. Come on, you were all over the building. You can't hide from God. That's it, honey. Come on, they're coming down every aisle. Come on, come on. Every one of you, come on. Right here in the middle. Right here in the middle. All right? Young people, you may put your hands down, and we're going to pray. You mean it from your heart. Everybody here, everybody watching mean it from your heart you ready out loud so the person in front of you gets nervous are you ready on three heavenly father Father, i come to you tonight i I was born a sinner and i've I've committed sins i come to you you because all men have have sinned only you have never sinned i ask you to come into my heart, forgive me, wash me clean, and give me eternal life. Satan, I renounce you. You are not my God, and I won't serve you. Now get out of my life. Jesus!
Jesus, come into my heart now. Thank you. I'm forgiven. I'm a believer. I'm on my way to heaven. And I'm in revival. And there's nothing the devil can do about it. I think I'll clap and shout. All right, stay right where you are. Thank you, Miss Katie. Miss Katie's got them. I don't see anybody else with cards. They have them? No. There, there we go. Okay, I need, I want every single one of these young people. You raised your hand tonight, right? You raised your hand. You prayed that prayer. I want you to fill out one of these cards. You got me? You catching what I'm dropping? Everybody, everybody that prayed that prayer and meant it, I want you to fill out that card. When you have a card and a pen, you can return to your seat. When you have a card and a pen, you can return to your seat. Okay? Hallelujah. All you people can return to your seat unless you're going to help these young people. It'd be nice if somebody would. at my house tonight it's good to see you well isn't God great Woo! Woo! somebody get that for me hallelujah hallelujah feel that song you make all things new. Were you singing that? Yes. Seems like it's in my head. All right. Just play it right now. He makes all things new. Yes, honey. You have fear? You won't after tonight. It's going to leave you. You ready? It's going to go. Go!
If you're thankful for what he's done, why don't you give him a hand clap yes, of praise? Jesus. For those of you that were given a card, right, that, that chose to follow Jesus tonight, made the conversion from lost to saved, we're so proud of you, first of all. We praise God for you. But we want to make sure that we have record of that, right? So that card, we want you to fill it out completely even if you've been here for a hundred years we want you to fill it out completely and when the offering containers come by here in a few moments just place that card inside that container and if you say well i still didn't get one guess what look at god there's one in the seat back pocket in front of you same card so just fill it out make sure you mark on there saved and hey think about and pray about following Jesus in water baptism. We have water baptism, when it, is it next week, Miss Stacy? Next week, next Sunday, or a, week from, this a Sunday. week from this Sunday, thank you. A week from this Sunday, we have water baptism. And that's the next step. You, you accept Jesus as your savior, you make that conversion, next step is water baptism. If you say, I've never heard of it, I don't know what that is, there are plenty of leaders around here. You at Harvest Prep, talk to Mills, talk to Santo, talk to Mr. Allen. They'll explain to you the significance of going down into that watery grave and coming up a brand new creature. Amen. And before I reintroduce our pastor to the pulpit, I just had to say that for, for a, a couple weeks now, I've felt like God had something to say to these two amazing young ladies. And I just, I, but I didn't know exactly what it was. And then when all of those Harvest Prep students were up here just a few moments ago, it hit me and Bree Bannerman and Taylor Clark, I don't know what your married name is now, but you two, that right there, what we just saw, God said that was a return on your investment that you made when you were coaching volleyball with those Harvest Preparatory School girls. You may not have seen the manifestation of the seed you were sowing then, but this is the harvest and it's just the beginning. Thank you for your heart, for, for these students, for your alma mater, because it, it wasn't like this when we were there, amen. I just love y'all so much. You just encourage me. Every time I look for you, every service, and I always see you back there so faithful. We love you so much. Amen. Will you welcome back our pastor, Dr. Rod Parsley, to the pulpit of World Harvest Church, the house of revival. And by pulpit, we mean bird peak. Looks like he's going to just stay comfortable, and that's fine with us. You be seated. So I have a word for you. I put it down right before I came in here, uh, and I want you to hear it as you would hear God, because that's where it came from. You understand? I don't mean to turn my back to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So Luke 22, 31. Luke 22, 31. Luke 22, 31. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, aren't you glad when he doesn't get your attention the first time, he'll call you again. Everybody is ready for another call. Say, I'm ready. Amen. He might call you tonight at 3 a.m. You better be ready. You, you wake up thirsty. It's not water you want. You wake up hungry. It's not, it's, it's not a Pop-Tart. That's not what you're after. You wake up with some little twinge of pain in your body. It's not about that. He's wanting to get your attention. He wants to say something to you. And uh, he's going to do that. And if you don't hear it the first time, don't worry about it. He'll, he'll call again. And if you don't hear him that time, he'll call you again. He, he will pursue you. Somebody said, I found the Lord. He wasn't lost. You didn't know where to look. Right? He will find you. He left eternity to come to find you like a pearl of great price, like a lost coin, like a lost sheep, 
like a lost boy? Will he not leave the 90 and 9 and do everything in his power to find the one? Well, he will. So Luke 22, 31, the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold. Anytime you find the word behold, get ready. Because something, something's about to happen. Some, something, 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 something is about to happen. Behold, Satan hath desired to have you. You know the devil wants you? No, you didn't understand me. Do you know the devil wants you? Yeah, that's why he brings that person into your life that you're having sex with, that you have no business. That's not God. Well, God brought us together. Well, if you're doing that, it wasn't God. It wasn't God nowhere near it. I don't know. That's for somebody. Amen. Eschew evil. Eschew evil. What does eschew mean? Leave it alone. Run from it. Treat it like a rattlesnake in bed with you. Amen. Satan has desired to have you that it might sift you as wheat. But, everybody shout, but. I, who's I? Jesus, I have, past tense, prayed for you. We, we don't get that. Jesus is right now in his high priestly intercessory role for every single one of us. He's knelt down at the right hand of the Father, interceding, pointing to his blood on the mercy seat, and he's praying for you. Now, you remember when he was outside the tomb of Lazarus, Jesus raised his hands to the Father and said this, Father, I know you hear me always. What do you think the Father's going to stop hearing him when he's praying for you? But he didn't pray in vague generalities. He prayed with great specificity. He said, I have prayed for you that your faith will not fail. Now, faith in God can move your mountain. Faith in God can cool the fevered brow of your infant child. Faith in God can heal you of COVID-19. Faith in God can get you a double paying job of what you've got right now. Faith in God can move you on up to the east side to a deluxe apartment in the sky. You're not listening to me. Faith in God can move every obstacle in your life. You are sitting right now in a room on top of a mountain that faith built. You don't understand what I'm talking about. When we were going to build this thing, we were ready to do it. The governor had come. We'd broken ground. We were ready to go. And the city came to us, as they always do, trying to stop whatever God's doing, and said, you can't build there. And I said, why not? They said it's in a 100-year flood zone. I said, but I don't know what that means, but God told me to build here. I already paid for this thing. Well, I didn't. The people did. And they paid for it in cash. And so it, look at these sidewalls. You see the sidewalls. You see them? They're pretty tall, right? Okay. Below there, those walls, as tall as that is straight down, that's how low the ground was. You know, I told you you're sitting on a mountain that faith built. What? What? They said the only way you can build there is to build the whole thing up and compress the dirt and you, and you have to have, have the dirt basically as hard as concrete. So you got to pack it and pack it and wet it and pack it and pack it and wet it. And pack it. That much for this whole building. So I was walking around. I, uh, all you preachers over there, we're so glad to have you sitting on top of a mountain that faith built. 
And, and so I was walking around out there, and a guy came up, and he said, uh, he was a funny-looking guy. He, you ever hear Mr. Green Jeans? No, you didn't. Mr. Green Jeans was on black and white TV. Mr. Green Jeans was a kid's program. And he was a farmer and he wore bibbed overalls. Well, that's what this guy looked like. He climbed down out of a filthy, dirty truck. And, and he had grease and oil all over him and dirt. He took his cap off and there was a ring right around there. And he had a chew of tobacco. What are you doing? I said, I'm, I'm just walking around here, and I'm talking to that dirt over there. He said, hmm. Climbed back up in his truck and left. Because on the other side of the creek down here were the football field and baseball field and softball field and the hockey field and, so and all the other stuff. That over there was higher than over here. So I was telling it to come over here. Didn't you ever talk to dirt? I talked to dirt. That man came back and met with my dad the next day. He said, your son's kind of a strange kind of cat. He's out there talking to dirt. And my dad told him, you know, the story. And, and he said, well, I got to thinking about it when I went home. And uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go buy the equipment. He didn't look like he could buy lunch. He said, I'm going to buy the equipment. And I'm going to move that dirt. And, and my dad said, well, now, wait a minute. You said my son was strange. Let me tell you how strange he is. He's, he's already raised the money to pay for what needs to be paid for, and moving that dirt is nowhere in it. And he's not going to go borrow money to do it. He said, I didn't say anything about money. I said, I'm going to move that dirt. And he bought five pieces of heavy equipment, moved every yard of that dirt, brought it over here, compacted it, and we poured concrete on top of it, and that's what you're sitting on. I told you, you're sitting on a mountain that faith built. And here's what God told me to tell you. Jesus is praying for you that your faith will not fail. So what makes you think he is going to fail? What are you believing for? What are you believing for? God told me to tell you your prolonged season of want is over. That's what he said. That's over. Look here. Look here what else he said, Elder Canfield. The next thing he said, I got it right here. And you are about to accelerate your due date. I'm not going to try to explain it. I'm just telling you what it said. Your prolonged season of difficulty has come to an end, and tonight you can accelerate your due date of giving birth to your miracle. That's what he said. That's what he said. Are y'all listening online? If, you, if you're watching online, give me a clap of the hands emoji right now. Do it, 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 do it. You. Now, here's how you can accelerate your due date. You got me, Maui? All right, buddy. 
Here's how you can accelerate your due date. How many of you are believing to give birth to some kind of a miracle, a blessing, a healing, a deliverance? Yeah. If you're not believing for something, you're in the wrong building. Always believing for something. Always. God's a faith God. He's not some other kind of God. And God said two things. Here's how you can accelerate your due date. To get an agreement with the prayer of Jesus, he's praying for you right now. Right now. He is your intercessor. He is in his high priestly office, washed in blood, cleansed. Like the high priest, he goes into the Holy of Holies, and there he makes sacrifice. He's doing that for you right now. He's pointing to the mercy seat. What are you believing for? Then ask yourself this question. Is that blood sufficient? You want your family saved? Is that blood sufficient? It's not about you. It's about that blood. So two things you can do to accelerate your due date. You getting this, Robert? 30 years from now, you will say, I was there, and Pastor Parsley said this, and then you've been preaching it at that time for the last 20 years. Here's how you can accelerate your due date. Number one, what you say. what you say. Keep saying you're broke. Keep saying I can't pay my bills. Keep saying I can't tithe. Keep saying I can't give to the poor. Keep saying I can't pay for my kids to be in Harvest Preparatory School, so I got to send them down to Egypt and then wonder why they act like Egyptians. Walk like Egyptians. <laughs> say it. I have to say it. I just told you, you're sitting on a mountain that faith moved. I moved all that dirt from over there to over here. Well, I didn't. Mr. Green Jeans did. But my faith did it. And so can yours. You can move your mountain. You can see your children saved and dancing before the Lord and prophesying and worshiping God. But you have to say something. Those words from God's Word are the debar of God that bypass the hard, callous surface of your mental reasoning, get deposited in the fertile soil of your human spirit, and then they come up out of there under the anointing of the Holy Spirit as the debar of God, which is not a description of the thing, but has the creative capability to be the thing. The words be the thing. The words become the thing. Number two is you seal it with a seed. What you say and what you sow. What you say and what you sow, type it in. I said type it in right now. Click, click, click. Type it in. What you say and what you sow. So it's time to sow, to accelerate your due date. Do you have a miracle you need, a healing you need, a breakthrough you need? Yes or no? Yes, yes or no online. Type in. Yes. Don't say no. I'll come and get you. Like that guy on YouTube says, I'll jump in this pool. So those are the ways you can give right there. Those of you online, the information is right there on your screen. This is the most fertile soil. These things are important. Soil, seed, season. This is the most fertile season of the year. It's Passover season. 
Whatever you sow now has extra anointing on it. Believe it. Conceive it. Receive it. I'm going to challenge everybody that needs to move your due date to get God involved and so Isaiah 43, 19 seed. It just came to me. Isaiah 43, 19. What does that say? Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. You say, I can't sow 43, 19. Sow 400, $439 or whatever it is. Sow $1,000. Somebody's got a mountain that needs to move. Put a seed on it. Direct that seed toward a need. Believe God. Father, bless these folks. Thank you for visiting us with your presence tonight. We're going to tell at least three people how gloriously blessed we were to be here in your presence. Thank you for every person here assembled watching online, whatever medium they're watching through. Now, Lord, speak to their hearts and cause them to give exactly as you have purposed and move their due date, Jesus. Somebody is going to give birth to a miracle they didn't even know they were pregnant with. Move their due date, Jesus. I believe you to do it. Amen. Amen. Give us unto the Lord. While you're giving uh, this coming Sunday morning, well, do you want to dismiss them to their campuses? Pastor Chris, would you do that for me? We certainly can. Are we ready in our online studio? Oh, that's right. What, what day is this? this Today's is Wednesday. <laughs> okay, right. Last night was choir. That's right. Hey, you're think joining us online. We're going to keep tonight. that giving information on the screens for you so you don't miss out on this opportunity to sow in this anointed season. God bless you. Sowing into the kingdom of God has never been easier or more secure than with smart giving. Any smartphone will work. To use your smart giving, open your text messaging app and send a message to the number 45777. In the message of your text, type the amount of your gift, space, WHC. If it's your first time giving, you'll receive a secure link to set up your account. Select your home campus, enter your giving method, and where you would like to receive your instant giving receipt. If you are already registered, the process is just the same. Just send a text message to 45777. Type the amount of your gift, space, WHC. You'll receive your receipt immediately. If you prefer, you can also sew online at whc.life or by phone or mail. Just call the number on your screen or send your gift to the address displayed.
Come on, ask him right where you are. 